Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the classic Tower of Hanoi problem. We'll also take a look at how we can solve that through code using recursion. Let's do it. All right, before we get to the complexities of the solution, and the algorithm that we have to use to solve the Tower of Hanoi. Let's just explore the game. Let's look at what the rules are and see if we can observe any patterns while solving it. Okay, the objective is to move all the rings from Tower A to Tower C. And we have to stack them according to their original order. There are just two rules. One is that we can only move the topmost ring each time. So I cannot move the complete tower or maybe two, three rings at once. I can only move the topmost ring from A to B or B to C, wherever. The second rule is that a ring with a larger number cannot be placed on top of a smaller ring. So if I have these rings, I cannot put four on top of three. Three can be placed on top of four, but not the other way around. Let's try to solve it for two rings first. The goal is to move all the disks from tower A to tower C. But since I cannot move the complete tower, I'll have to do it one by one. And uh, I want two to be available to be moved. So I'll put one from A to B. Now two is available. I'll put it from A to C and then bring back one from B to C and that solves the problem for two disks. If we have to do the same thing for three disks, I'll follow a similar approach that I want three to be available to be moved. So whatever is above three, which is one, two, I'll move it from A to B. But since I cannot move one, two directly from A to B, I'll first have to move one from A to C so that I can move two to B such that the complete thing one, two is moved from A to B and we used C as a spare tower in this case. But to move the complete thing one, two, three, we are actually using B as a spare tower to make three available, which is now available. I'll move it to C and then Whatever the remaining portion of the tower we move to the spare column, we'll move it back to C. Okay, let's try the same thing with four disks. The concept stays the same. I want four to be available. And to do that, I'll move the subset of tower, which is one to three from A to B so that I can move four from A to C. And in order to move one, two, three from A to B, I'll use C as a spare tower. And I'll first move one, two to C so that I can bring three to B. Okay, so let's move one, two to C. Now three is available. I can move it from A to B. Let's bring these back. Now four is available. We used B as a spare to move tower one, two, three from A to B so that four can be moved from A to C since C is the destination. Okay. Now the remaining tower, which we initially moved to B, we, we want to bring it back to C. And to do that, I want three to be available. So I'll first move one, two to A so that three can be moved to C. Okay, so we are following similar steps here. And that's how we're able to solve it with least possible number of moves. Okay, if we have to nail down the number of steps that we are taking, step one is whatever is the tower above my largest disk, I want to move that to column to pillar B. Like in this case, one, two is above three. So I want to move that to B. 
then the next step is the largest disk which is now available goes from A to C and then the tower that we moved from A to B we now want it moved from B to C and we'll use A as the spare tower and that solves the problem. Now we'll try to code the exact same steps using recursion. Let's try that. Let's try to solve it in C++. So I have a very basic program here with the main function where we are just printing tower of Hanoi to the console. So let's create a function tower of Hanoi which will take in first thing the number of disks that can be in. Then we need a from tower, a spare tower and a to tower to move the disks to and from. Now to be able to call this function, I can just take an input from the user because this program will be solving the tower of Hanoi problem for them. So let's say we ask them to enter the number of disks. Take that in N. And then we call tower of Hanoi with N. And then initially the from can be A, spare B, and then 2 is C. So we want to move the tower from A to C and B is our spare pillar. Now in here, we'll just first put a terminating condition that if N is 0, we'll not do anything, we'll just return. Otherwise, like the steps that we discussed, if I want to solve Tower of Hanoi for say three disks, I'll first move the Tower of Hanoi with two disks from A to B using C so that three becomes available. We'll do the same thing here. I will do Tower of Hanoi and this is where recursion will kick in for n minus one disk. So if three is the input then for two, move it from, from itself but the destination will be the spare pillar, which is B. And C will be treated as spare, like the two will be treated as spare. Once we're done doing that, the highest order disk will become available. So we'll just move that. Move disk. from from two two okay so for three it will be like move disk three from a to c once three becomes available with the help of this recursion call once that is done then i want to call tower of an again and the n minus one tower that i just moved from a to b I want to move it again from B to C. That means I want to move it from spare to two and from will be auxiliary or from will be the spare from will be treated as spare here. So with just simple logic and recursive calls, this code should now give out the algorithm to solve the tower of Hanoi. Let's give it a try. Let's say I enter the number of disks as three. Oh, let me format that. Okay, so it asks me to move A to C, A to B, then C goes to B. Yeah. Then finally, disk three moves from A to C. Then disk one goes from B to A. Disk two goes B to C, disk one goes A to C. Yeah, all the disks are coming to C, finally. Now, since this is a recursive call and we were doing it manually before, it can very quickly solve it for a greater number as well. 
okay now to understand this even better we'll have a quick look at the call stack so that we know how all these recursive functions are unfolding say when i'm entering 3 as the input how this is getting called with 2 and then how that is getting called with 1 and so on so let's take a look at that once we're done with that we'll also talk about the time and space complexity of this but the solution is good to go i also thought it will make sense to try to solve the tower of hanoi with the steps generated by our program just to validate our program so let's try that quickly move disk 1 from a to c 2 from a to b 1 from c to b 3 from a to c 1 from b to a 2 from b to c 1 from a to c okay so the solution that our program generated is working let's have a walkthrough of how this code will actually execute with all the recursions and how the call stack will be made so if you focus on just this function you can see it has a terminating condition check if n equals to 0 it just returns otherwise it calls tower of hanoi for n minus 1 it does a c out for the last disk moving it from from to 2 and then it again calls tower of hanoi with n minus 1 and it moves the blocks from spare to 2 like initially it moved from from to the spare then it moved it back from spare to 2 so if we see it in action we'll have a call of tower of hanoi 3 abc where 3 is the from c is the 2 and b is spare this is the ultimate goal that we want to have we want to move all these three disks from a to c so as soon as this call gets executed it will first check if 3 is equals to 0 it's not then it will execute the tower of hanoi n minus 1 statement where the movement is from to spare and 2 is the spare 2 gets used as spare but the movement is from from to spare so we call tower of hanoi 2 and it is a to b now as soon as this is called a similar check will be made and since it's a recursive call it will again call n minus 1 since 2 is not equals to 0 and it will switch the 2 and spare again so we'll get tower of hanoi 1 comma a b c so we are now going from a to c then again we'll have a call for tower of hanoi n minus 1 which will be 0 in this case and as soon as we hit 0 we're just returning from the function so this will complete the depth of one call we'll come back to the parent function and we'll do the c out the c out is move one from a to c and that's exactly what we get in the output okay so it's actually this c out for the inner function then the inner function will call tower of an a again with n minus one but that will be zero and it will return so it will come up the call stack again once this is fully executed will come up again so for this tower of hanoi 2 acb tower of hanoi n minus 1 initial call is completed and it will now do the c out and we'll get move 2 from a to b okay which is this as soon as this is done it will call tower of hanoi n minus 1 for the next part where we are moving everything back from spare to the 2 so like in this case this is from this is 2 and this is the spare now spare will become the from two stays two and from will become the spare and in here it will again try to first do n minus one it will be zero it won't do anything and then it will say move one from c to b which is the third print statement that we get once that is done uh, so the c out is done it will do tower of hanoi n minus 1 which will be 0 and this will be completed so that marks this as completed we'll come back here and now this complete left subset of our initial call is done 
and we'll come back to our main function now for the main function this line is completely executed with the recursions and we'll do a c out of move disk 3 from a to c and that's what we see as the fourth line in our output okay now very similarly the right part of the tower of Hanoi will get executed so we'll get tower of Hanoi 2 BAC because it's from the spare to the 2 so B was spare and C was 2 and similarly it will have its own left and right side which will get executed recursively so this will be done then we'll get this output we'll come back here come back here we'll get sixth output then it will call tower of Hanoi with one this will return we'll get the seventh output this will return ultimately the complete call will return back and we'll come to the end of this function and the program will end so that was a quick dry run and call stack explanation of how this code is working. Let's also talk about the time and space complexity for this solution. So if we talk about the number of steps, um, how they increase with the number of disks is, if there's a single disk, there's just one step. With two disks, we have three steps because we repeat the disk one step two times and then move the base disk. Similarly, if the disks are three, then it becomes double of number of steps for two plus one. Similarly, if the number of disks become four, that becomes double of number of steps for four plus one. That one step is for moving the base plate and then we are repeating the tower of Hanoi for n minus one. So this formula makes sense. So if you want to give a generic number of steps, that will be 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay, so that's the generic formula. If you talk about the time and space complexity for this solution, for space complexity, since we're only using the disk number and that is being used independently in each recursive call, so that space complexity will be pay go of n, where n is the number of disks. That's the only thing that we are storing. For time complexity, the time complexity increases exponentially as the number of steps, they just double with each additional disk. So time complexity will be pay go of two to the power n. I hope you were able to follow me throughout the solution. It's just three simple steps done repetitively. If you have any confusion about the implementation or about how the recursion is happening or how the call stack is uh, unfolding, feel free to put that in the comments below or reach out to me on LinkedIn or Instagram. If you like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for more learning content. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.